Hey guys, it's Ian Benjamin, Digital Hub. And yes, we are back. Absolutely delighted to be back. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a few months. Uh, but we're back with a new series, we've got new focus, uh, in I, and it, well, basically, essentially, 18 months have gone um, since obviously BLM, uh, George Floyd, and uh, there's been a, been a lot of changes, right? A lot of changes. What has happened in that time? And um, I mean, I think uh, public um, across the board globally realize now that you know us black folk, uh, black individuals, um, haven't been making it up <laughs> all these years, and we've now got a platform and recognition to be talking about it. And uh, we're as a collective community can talk about these issues that we face throughout our lives. And and um, so now this has happened. Um, you know, 18 months ago, um, from an employment point of view, as a recruiter. Podcast isn't about that. Recruitment takes a back seat for a little while, only for a minute. Uh, but while it's taking a back seat, we're going to be focusing on what has changed. You know, what has changed? What have we seen that's happened? What has worked? Uh, what hasn't worked? What we'd like to see change and, uh, or more changes be done and so forth. So, my guests um, are significant individuals from within the NI space, EDNI space in the UK. Uh, we might have one or two individuals from overseas as well. Um, coming on board, but, but right now we're going to be focusing on uh, uh, give you some guests that are based over here, UK. Really blessed today um, to have with me Rob Neal, um, famous individual, recognised individual. Um, so I'll give you a bit, you guys a bit of a background um, to, to Rob in a moment. But uh, but Rob, how are you doing? Well, uh, firstly, thanks for having me. Um, it, it's wonderful to be here. Um, I've seen some of your previous offerings Ian uh, and the fantastic wonderful wonderfully inspiring conversations that you've had with previous guests um, I'm going to do my best to uh, live up to that but it's <laughs> great, great to be here I'm, um, I'm good energy wise I'm, I'm feeling good um, physically intellectually uh, and emotionally uh, and my, <laughs> spir my spiritual levels are, are in good shape too Superb, man. Superb. Looking forward to it. It's really, really good. So, so let me give my uh, listeners and viewers a bit of an in insight to who you are, Rob. So Rob is an OBE. And uh, let me kind of give you a bit of a rundown. So Rob was born in London. I can hear the London accent coming through loud and clear. Um, in the Borough of Bent, And he joined the Ministry of Justice, MOJ, um, in 1983, believe it or not. I know he looks like a young whippersnapper. And um, so he started out in Harlesden, um, in the county court, worked his way up. Um, we're going to kind of get into it in the podcast, but I mean, but then in 2016, all the different achievements that he had, um, all different things that he'd achieved, he was recognised by um, the New 50, New View 50, which recognises influential Black and Asian minority ethnic leaders, um, and he's recognised on their final list. Um, he was also then in 2018. Uh, one of the highest accolades that you can receive. He was given a OPE in 2018 at Buckingham Palace um, through the work that he's done in putting in ethnicities, workplace, a uh, part of, the, of their Hero Awards. And, uh, and then more recently, after 38 years with the, uh, the public sector, working for the Department of um, Education as head of culture change, um, Rob, has, 38 years, has now retired from that. He kicked off with his own consultancy, Crystal Alliance, that we'll hear about, which is focusing on delivering uh, EDNI workshops and consultancy into the public sector and also into the private sector. So without further ado, do we kind of um, dive into it, Rob, yeah? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's do it, buddy, let's do it. So, so, so what's going on? What are you working on right now? What's happening with you? What are you... Uh, Oh, wow. found it? oh yeah i mean we're just coming up to uh, a bit of a milestone for ka uh, crystal alliance um it's a, a group of friends initially who got together um um with a view to supporting organizations across the public private and voluntary sector who genuinely want to be more inclusive who have a desire a passion, a commitment to be more inclusive. And um, between us, we're a team of 10 people, um, uh, all of us with other projects ongoing, but coming together in this common space we know and love as KA called Crystal Alliance. Mm. Um, 
and it's um, a, a, a diverse mix of people, um, uh, mm -hmm. a range of, of ethnicities in there, a range of abilities, some, some healthy um, neurodiversity, but some real um, relationships have formed over some years, decades in some cases. We've got a couple of published authors, we've got some skilled and qualified practitioners around aspects of human resources, um, we've got some culturally intelligent, some Myers-Briggs practitioners, uh, mindfulness is in the mix. It's a real nice right. mix Collective. of people who, yeah, support individuals in the workplace to right. make uh, work better. Okay, so how are you um, seeking out those opportunities or how, how are people finding about you? How, does, well, how, are you, how, is, how is that in mirrored up? I've got to say, we're, we're at such an early phase of our journey, Ian. I say early because, you know, we're not, we're new, new on the block. Um, we've not, uh, as we speak, we've, anyway, we've not pitched for any work. We've not bid for any work. We've been blessed, as I would say, but certainly we've been fortunate. And, you know, we've had um, some, some right of way in that, um, whether it be the website, um, that people have looked at and liked, you know, as far flung as New Zealand was one piece of wow. work. Mm. And they they literally caught the website. They, they they liked what they saw. They had conversations with us. And, you know, um, weeks later, we were we were delivering some work for them. Um, wow. But then closer to home, um, we've got a couple of uh, housing corporations. We've got some water utilities. We've worked with, um, it's all on a website. We We like to echo on our website those that we've worked with with testimonials and other commentary uh, we've got a regular blog feature on the site we do something called ka reads uh, yeah. which is led by my dear uh, friend one of our associates yvonne she regularly rounds up um individual reviews of books not always best selling or top selling but just books that have um piqued an interest right and so we recommend them through the website um, sure. and um, there's, a bit, there's a bit on each of the associates on the website so people can find out more there if they want to. Right, gotcha. So, so I suppose you might go into a company or get an inquiry, then you know, depending on what the situation is, you kind of scope it out and kind of find out yeah. where they are in the ED&I journey and then you kind of like tailor, vote, solution, deliver. Exactly that. Exactly that. Are. Absolutely. We meet them at their point of need. This isn't about us working with the elite or working with those that aren't ready. Um, we meet people at their point of need. Um, if it's A and E or triage, then that's what we do. Right, if gotcha. it's, you know, if it's if it's more about we've got gone as far as we can and we'd like some support to go further, then that's what we do. And we've got such a rich range of experience that we feel um, we can meet. Uh, most, if not all, needs certainly those that we've come across so far. Well, yeah, well, I mean, just from yourself, I mean, you know, from your background, really well versed, do so, you know, uh, to do so, absolutely. Well, I mean, the, the timing's right as well as you know, as, as I touched on at the beginning uh, with BLM, George Floyd, etc., and so forth. I mean, um, you're delivering like a collective. That, news. I got to say that was that was pretty much an accident uh, from my end. I um, was coming towards the end of my career in the public sector um or at least thinking about that and then it was wasn't it the 25th of may uh 2020 yeah when, um when george had his life stolen um and you know it was in plain sight and um it was recorded in real time and so when when george drew his final breath bless his soul um i think nations around the world just held their breath and just couldn't believe what they were mm. seeing. And that converted into a conversation within uh, organizations and across organizations. And, you know, it, the cry for help and support that, that we heard George mutter yeah. Yeah, 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 was, was echoed and rippled out. And so if there is at least a part of his legacy, um, you know, we all his his dear wife his daughter most of all would would want george back but but if his legacy is to be really um embraced and made 
hugely positive, then I think one of the things that that some of us can do is to take that conversation into all corners of organisation. Yeah. Definitely, it's, it's kind of like you know, it's it's a never it's a negative positive or positive negative where what's happened, and it's given effectively that the platform for for change. You know, it's a shame that someone had, had to lose their life because of this, yeah. uh, which is which is insane. I mean, one of the things I think we, we kind of touched on it before in terms of the we're saying it's causing divide, it's caused a bit of divide and so forth. Well, what's your view on that? On on divide divide in terms of the, the vision that come out of the uprising of us as a collective community to say look enough's enough we want to put some you know long-term definite changes in place yeah I mean, well you know. i think i mean you know the 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 uprisings uh were were always a tinderbox there was something going to happen in my view um we had a spate of um of killings at the hand of uh, enforcement officers uh, not you know, months before, you know, uh, whether it be Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. um, you know, bring it right back here to the UK. We had the trial earlier this year of of um, following Dalian Atkinson's death, yeah, uh, former professional footballer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the officer involved in that incident has been found guilty of manslaughter and is currently serving time oh, at yeah. his pleasure. So, you know, I often sit with uh, some senior leaders who want to um, express their denial, their cognitive dissonance around it being an American issue. Well, it's not. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. So, how, how do you handle that? I mean, because I mean, because as, as me as I'm a black guy, clearly so I get that as well. So, and I, and I've, you know, how do you, you know, how, how do I know how I handle it, or how I can recall how I have handled it in the past? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, have you? You just said then, you know, have you had that conversation across the table? Absolutely. I mean, it's a well rehearsed conversation now, Ian. I mean, it wasn't, you know, on the first occasion I heard it. I mean, I was like a lot of us, Ian, from the, the black community to have someone uh, assert that view. Um, if you're hearing it for the first time, it can be upsetting. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can it can anger you. Um, and, you know, beyond frustration, it can be it can cause some legitimate anger. To boil up inside of you because you know yeah. it's not your lived experience. You've either know lived something every day of my life like that. When we close exactly. that front door, the front yeah. door, when we, when we go yeah. in the face of the world, every yeah, day, exactly. You know what, what we're up against. It, exactly. Uh, you know, a dear friend of mine taught me once. You know, who feels it knows it. Um, and um, I, um, I can still remember oh, yeah. vividly the occasions on which I've been stopped and searched. Um, and whilst uh, I. I, I won't say I, I felt my life was ever um, uh, under threat. I certainly felt scared and fearful as to what mm. would happen next. But Definitely. coming back to your question, uh, it's a well rehearsed uh, exchange for me now because um, I've added to my residual knowledge about the UK examples, whether you want to talk about Roland Adams, uh, whether you want to talk about Mark Duggan, um, you you might yeah. want to talk about like local to uh, me. Mm. Yeah, Christopher Older, Smiley Culture, Joy Gardner, Roger Sylvester, Cynthia Jarrett. You know, these are right. all individuals that are tattooed on my heart because they're members of our black community who have lost their lives mm. at the hands of the establishment. And to this day, their families and friends are campaigning for justice. Mm. Um, you know, we've had the 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 incompetent investigation into Stephen Lawrence's murder. Yeah. Um, now Stephen didn't lose his life at the hands of the police, but uh, and bless his soul. But having lost his life, his his mother and his father, Doreen and Neville, campaigned long and hard um, to bring those that were responsible to justice. Yeah. Um, and still, uh, having been offered six names, only two currently serving. Uh, a sentence um, and and that not for uh, Stephen's murder. So, um, you know, civil action bought um, all sorts of machinery coming against Doreen and Neville um, mm. and uh, a campaign that runs to this very day mm. to seek justice on on their behalf because of the incompetence of the police who were following the Lord William McPherson's review, him and his team, 
Lord William McPherson, who sadly passed away earlier this year, but they found the police to be institutionally racist. 100%. 100% uh, and, yeah, yeah. You know, mm. it, it might be that current leaders within that force want to push back at that. Um, mm. and, and, and I think we can appreciate why they would want to do that. Mm. The reality is that many of us still feel that the police remain institutionally racist. Yeah, and definitely. It's important that those that are in positions of leadership, whether they're in the police or otherwise, Mm. It's important that they understand and acknowledge what institutional racism is. Um, many of them don't, Ian. That's the issue. Yeah, sure. They're ignorant about what happens on these shores when it comes to race inequality. They're ignorant about the definition of institutional racism, which William McPherson and his team drew from Stokely Carmichael back in 1968, who gave the world a definition. Uh, and they fail to appreciate, this is part of the cognitive dissonance, this is part of the denial, they fail to appreciate the dimensions of racism that ultimately end up in systemic and institutional uh, forms. Of, of life, we have to live through, unfortunately, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, from, from my point of view, I mean, clearly, I'm, I'm, I'm a recruiter, so, I mean, from an employment point of view, um, speaking to, I'd reach out to um, or ethnic minority candidates about a specific vacancy and i've done this for years i've been in recruitment for like 10 12 years now and having a really really good opportunity for a candidate of color and they would sit on their hands and not go through that six to eight weeks emotional journey of two or three interviews because they know they where it's going to end up that they're not going to get the position and so in terms of what i see what's happened over the last 18 months i think it's a good thing uh, that people are are having plenty of awkward conversations, companies are changing internally, and, and that trust now starts to be built, to, built again um, between the employer and correctly candidates, because it was missing. I speak to a candidate and they'll say to me, no, no, I'm, I'm going to stay where I am. And I'm like, why? Because, oh, no, no, I've done to go, I've done to go for that. No, 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 I've done it, I've done it, and I've seen, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Especially when I'm a father of two kids and who are coming out, my boy's 17, my daughter's 14. Mm. I don't want them thinking that. They're not going to get the right opportunity that they would well and truly deserve to get. So I think what's happened has definitely caused a lot of shift. Um, it's caused some acknowledgement that there is an issue. I think things are starting to happen in the right direction, um, are moving slowly in the right direction, some faster yeah, than others. But, it, but the, the, the word of caution I'd give there, Ian, and I'm with you, by the way, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. There are days, uh, sometimes, um, you know, uh, weeks at a time where my optimism uh, leads my effort and I will go about my work and my business um, in, in an optimistic way. And uh, like you, I've got two uh, children. They're now young adults, and yeah. I want to feed that positivity. My word of caution, and it's always there, um, is that our journey, Ian, uh, when it comes to race and delivering uh, racial equity, our journey is not linear. Um, it, it's not. It's not in one direction of um, progress, albeit small increments. It's a bumpy road. It's a it's a bumpy road and it goes back and forth. Yeah, it goes back and forth as I'm reminded of a cameo track, but it goes back and forth. And in doing so. Sometimes when we don't read, you know, the two steps back, it can it can send a shudder and it can it can cause us to 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 recoil. And that's why you get certain actions. Absolutely. And that's why some of your Reactions. candidates some of my colleagues, myself, will say, you know what, I'm not going to go for that because yeah, 100%, I don't, exactly. I don't get it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know who's at the top of that organization. I know who the top team are. Uh, there's no one like me in that organization who can read me, yeah. appreciate me, value me. Look, look uh, like me, whatever. How do I know they're doing yeah. it? That's why I think, you know, speaking to companies about their DNI, let's see what they're doing and holding them to account for it and also getting them to talk about it on video. So from, again, I don't want to get into recruitment right now, but I mean, speaking to my clients about, you know, and then giving them the opportunity to talk on video on Zoom even, or even you know, in their office about what they're doing and then showing that video to candidates of colour. So look, you now they are doing something. There is people there, individuals there 
are on the same that are from the same culture as us and you know that can so you know there is an opportunity there now or or they are showing that there are opportunities for you to, to join the join the organization Absolutely. i think um trust is needed so um, so much and um otherwise you know, i think you said about taking two steps back exactly what's going to happen you know yeah. where because yeah. people are paying lip service to what's making an improvement and yeah. uh, but that, that needs to happen that needs yeah. to happen you know and, and just touching on something else I heard you say, Ian, I'd agree with you on that, by the way, 100%. But you touched on something earlier about um, the fact that we are having more conversations now, mm. the fact that we are more aware of the, the terrain, the turbulence that we face on the journey, part of the struggle, and that it's not linear. I think knowledge of that, when we program our, uh, uh, our working sat-nav uh, to to uh, to accept that these things will happen but that doesn't mean that we we don't uh, look to avoid any of the upset or sidestep it or move around it but knowledge that it could happen is actually helping us navigate that whole journey in a much more efficient way and what's mm. happening at the same time which it, it evidenced by occasions such as these and your series of talks is that we are connecting far more we're connecting more efficiently we're forming alliances with like-spirited like-minded individuals who are committed when it comes to the issue of race and racism they're committed to anti-racism yeah. you know we've 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 accessed ibram x kendi's book how to be an anti-racist we're sharing the narrative with uh, well-intentioned white people who yeah. act as powerful allies when we're not in certain spaces and I think that oh, that a massive tick in the box is great. Yeah, it's it? huge. It's yeah. huge. And I think we're well, getting needed because I mean, because without them, it ain't going to change. Because I mean, because we're as a black um, individual, we're not typically in those positions of influence. They could change. So we need we need individuals yeah. that you're referring to to help us do that. Otherwise, it ain't going to happen. Because we're not, you know, a lot of the time, like like the C250 or top C350 companies, I don't think there's one black CEO. Mm. I mean, it, you know, I know there isn't in the top 100, so therefore, yes. you know, the ultimate power, ultimate control, there isn't anybody there to influence that down or for someone of who's coming up, like your son or daughter. Leave, or even leave the door open. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So we need someone, you know, so there's, 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 there's no disrespect, I mean, but they're all white individuals, a lot of them, they're all white, which is great, you know, fair play, but I mean, but there's not enough colour there to... to as out to how you know so individuals that are white need to be there um who are on board with the program otherwise yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't stand a chance we don't stand a chance so you know we need to have them on our side the good news is for anyone who picks this up and anyone who's listening in um if you don't already know the, the good news is that we are building connections mm. uh, and through organizations like uh, the reach society for example check them out www.reachsociety.com um, we are building connections uh, with people in our community, supportive of our community and communities, because, as you know, Ian, there's wonderfully uh, rich nuances amongst our community. And those connections are delivering real positive outcomes and real positive results that I think uh, our children and our children's children will be able to surf on and use that power to deliver even more of our potential. Yeah, yeah definitely, that's great. I was going to ask you about that in terms of what, what, what have you seen that's been done? And so the REACH Society, I mean, I've not heard of them to be fair, so that's, I'm glad you kind of put that out there. And, yeah. Um, what, what you've seen from, from your perspective. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think there's definitely, you know, there's connections being made. I've seen, as you know, some of this, I think a lot of it's authentic, that there's going to be some of it that isn't. Um, and I think a lot of companies will need to be held accountable that may be saying that they're got an ED and I policy, like Savills, for example, the construction company, where the guy from who um, probably racially, racially abused Saka, uh, Sancho, and yeah, um, after I, mean, he, I think he worked with Savills, but they had a massive ED and I um, uh, statement on their website, and so obviously they, they got called to kind of answer um, a little bit about that. And so maybe, I mean, what, what the companies do, how they implement throughout the organisation, something that may be, may be looked at going forward. You know? 
Well, the, the, you know, we're, we're talking through the lens of race. There's there's a number of things happening. Um, you know, there's there's the business in the community uh, and the fantastic Sandra Kerr and her team are doing some work uh, around race at work, and they have an annual race at work survey. Um, sorry, what company? Sandra Kerr, and who's she with? Sorry, business in the community, B I T C. Okay. Um, Sandra Kerr, that's K E W R, um, and she. Um, has developed uh, a number of projects through uh, Race for Opportunity, which is based at Business in the Community. And she's um, running uh, a uh, regular, I think it started um, biannually, and I think it's now gone to annual, where she uh, gets organisations across all sectors signed up to the um, a commitment, a, a charter, a Race right. of Charter. Wow. About, yeah. Yeah talks about an executive sponsor for race it talks about um zero tolerance around race and racism in your organization it talks about uh, um so essentially it's over and above putting up some up on your website saying that we Absolutely. are yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 and and she's got a number of organizations now into triple figures of organizations across all sectors wow across, um across all disciplines uh the law housing um um retail yeah. uh, you know, Sainsbury's, etc. Lots of big organisations are signed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I know Paul Cisse. I mean, I've interviewed Paul, and he, I know he's got the um, he's got the top fifty index companies as well. Yeah, and I absolutely. don't know what sits behind that. I don't know how thorough it is, but for what yeah. Sandra's got, that seems pretty. What you're talking about seems pretty. Uh, and pretty and the new, the newest tool on the block um, that I'm aware of. There may be even newer tools now, but yeah. certainly uh, launched earlier this year. Um, and already um, practiced by some early adopters is the wonderful work that um, Carl George and his team have developed. Carl's based in Birmingham. He's known for his governance expertise uh, across the world, actually. He's known as the governor uh, because of his governance work. Carl George, that's Carl with a K. Um, he's based in, in Birmingham, but has done his work all over the UK. And he's developed from his governance work and his principles and provisions around governance, Ian, which is a very strict discipline in all organisations. Um, he's developed an algorithm that looks at delivering racial equality called the race code. Right. Well, OK. Uh, and there's a website. You can you can check it out at the website, www.theracecode.org. Um, one word, theracecode.org. And Carl and his team, um, and I was blessed um, to be involved in some of its formation mm. and its design um, at that time. But he's got a wonderful team of race consultants who now roll out the race code. Wow, so awesome. It okay. is awesome. And let me Definitely, tell you, yeah. Yeah, as yeah. someone who's been involved in this space for over 20 years, for me, it's one of the most exciting tools to come about. Why? Because... He took his time, nine months in gestation. He took his time to look at the existing reviews, the existing um, commissioned reports, the existing action plans, including William McPherson's report, 70 recommendations, including Ruby McGregor Smith, her uh, report, Race at Work, Racism at Work, which had 24 recommendations, including David Lammy's work on the criminal justice system, which had a number of recommendations. And he's pooled those recommendations together he's married any that were covering similar ground he's remember he's got a governance background so his his forensic eye has looked at what is it that organizations need to be doing in order to transform the way in which they deliver on race equality um right. nine months in gestation uh, he's developed a, a 54 point uh, set of provisions uh, there's a raft of material on the website, some of it open source and freely available for anyone who's listening to this podcast. Well, but, also, well, awesome. but, but also a paid effort, of course, a contracted commercial aspect to the work where organisations who really want to deliver on racial equality uh, have an opportunity to, to do so. They can follow that. So that we're doing this based on this. Absolutely. We're putting this in place Absolutely. next year or whatever. You yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. Again, great, great take. And on, on the 1st of December, there is an event 
uh, taking place that looks at brigading all of those early adopters and obviously with their permission, sharing what they've done in order to um, receive the seal of approval, the kite mark about their race uh, equality work. Yeah. I think that's, that's really, really important. Exciting. I think, I think, yeah. I think you know, again, it goes back to what I said earlier in terms of, you know, Paul Floyd had to lose his life for us to get to this point. But I don't think it would have happened if he never, if, if never lost his life, which is unfortunate. Uh, but that's just my opinion. And But we, we are where we are now because we're, we're heading in the right direction. So, but I mean, but what I think what companies need to know now, 2022 coming up, is what has worked over the last year? What, the size of a company, 50 people, 20 people, what has worked? what conversations were had, how did they go about it, yeah. what hasn't worked, why yeah. hasn't it worked, so it's that sort of thing, which especially that really, really does interest me, um, I'm, you know, a black guy, and plus also being a recruiter, and to see what's going to help get more of a, a fair flow of people of colour working in these organisations at the moment in time, so what has Absolutely. worked, what yeah. hasn't worked, what have you seen, what, yeah. you know, and I, that... think, I think you're right, Ian, I think the best way in which we all of us can honour George's uh, life and we can pay respect to his uh, death, which came at the hands of the police officer uh, and specifically the knee. Um, what we can do to best honour that tragedy um, mm. is to carry out uh, the ultimate post-mortem, which is on organisations' performance over the last year, year and a half, yeah. and to look deeply at what they've done beyond the hashtags beyond the uh, yes, uh I mean, lanyards like a, what have people a done bit of an audit of an audit yeah. being held, held yeah. accountable in a certain way to a certain degree okay. and who's going to sit their hand up and say look we want to be held accountable for what we've done and we want to show you what we've done and uh, whatever you know well wow, rob is great man time's flying man time's flying you know what i mean but listen i want yeah. to talk about you as well so yeah. what, what was it so was it your upbringing was it your upbringing sure to take it back 38 years in the public sector yeah, what kind, of, what kind of got you into that space in the first well, place? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, my dad arrived here in the uh, UK, it, specifically in, in London, settled in London, um, just two years before um, sending funds to, to bring my mum out. Um, oh, okay. Um, in 1960. So they, they were married before, they were married. Where, where were they from? Well, they, they had formed a, a relationship, but they hadn't married. Right, okay. But, where but from? That, where were they from? Jamaica. Okay, Jamaica. Okay. Both my parents are from Jamaica, uh, okay. from the South uh, West Parish of Saint Elizabeth, um, in Jamaica, known for its um, red dirt. Um, really? Yeah, red dirt. Yeah, okay. it's very. It's got very, very red, rich in bauxite, aluminium ore, um, and in the parish we've got the Allport plant. At one point, the largest exporter of aluminium, uh, aluminium ore than any other country. Uh, well, of, well, okay, uh, didn't know that, man. Well, and and also a lesser known fact, at one point, I think it still operates occasionally, but it had the longest running conveyor belt in the world. <laughs> well, from, it, the actual, from the mine, from, from where they're mining it from. Oh, exactly that, wow. exactly that. And um, again, I've been fortunate and, and blessed to have visited uh, Jamaica on a number of occasions now. I've, I've lost count the amount of times I've been. Yeah, I've been a couple of times, um, yeah. yeah. And I've, I've, I've been up and I've literally touched the, the conveyor belt, been to Allport. My uncles, a number of them worked at Allport. Um, if, you, if you're from the parish of St. Elizabeth, then you, you've, at some point you've worked there. Yeah, part of your heritage, like, growing up. Exactly, exactly. So dad in 60, mum in 62. Okay. Um, I came along in 64. Uh, and if we do the math, um, depending on when this goes out, you'll know my next birthday, uh, I'll be 58. And so I've spent 38 years in a career in the public sector. But, but, but I, I settled and was born in Paddington and settled in northwest London, Harleston specifically. Right. Um, some of your listeners, no doubt, will know of Harleston um, in northwest 10. No, yeah, yeah, definitely, um, of course. And then um, uh, I have an older sister by two years and a younger, sister, a younger brother, I should say, by two years. So I'm the middle uh, child. Right. Um, and um, um, my upbringing was a, a very happy one, um, full of love. Um, yep. uh, I got to the age of, where was I, about seven or eight when mum and dad um, couldn't hold it together anymore. Um, and so uh, dad was um, invited to leave the house. And so <laughs> um, 
that happened. And then after a few... That was rare back then, though. I reckon that was quite rare then, wasn't it? Wasn't that quite, well, quite rare? Possibly. I mean, Dad did, I think, his level best to, um, you know, meet his responsibilities. Uh, Mum did her best to manage all of his foibles. Um, <laughs> amongst them is his petty his petty gambling, um, you know, but but it got quite significant. And it was a bit much for mum, you know, she needed a more stable situation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hard enough as it was, right? Hard yeah. enough as it is over here. But the love was always there from both my parents, I have to yeah. say, even when dad uh, eventually accepted that it, he wasn't going to be put up with any longer. Um, but after that bit of turbulence, um, my brother and I um, always felt the love um, we moved into um, and settled in Wembley with our aunt um, who took us in and um, really uh, made all things possible because, you know, there wasn't a burden of any heavy duty rent on mum. Mum contributed to the running of the home. By then, my aunt had been widowed. And so, you know, I was really brought up by two mums, to be fair. Right. Um, um, and I felt that and I'm the product of that. Um, nice. So what, what age were you then? I went, I would say that was about from seven to the age of 19, 20. Wow, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, wow, definitely, yeah. yeah. That's a really, really... Real formative part. years, yeah. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, 100%, yeah. And, you know, went to school around the corner, uh, formed lots of... Um, I'm quite extroverted by nature, so I find it quite easy to make acquaintance and make friends. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not... I'm not someone who welcomes or even enjoys time on my own i enjoy company of others um i'm 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 at my happiest yeah me too i think like yeah i do like my own time but i do you know yeah i like you i suppose like being i'm like social like talking to people yeah, i just i love it interaction just yeah uh, well, i mean when you first contacted me about doing this i thought yeah let's get a live audience let's do it with lots <laughs> of people but uh, to anyone who's chuckling now listening to the podcast just know that i'd prefer it even more if I could see you and talk to you. Yeah, um, we'll do it next time. We'll do it next time. We'll do like a live, a live thing. Or something. Live thing. So yeah, I'm, I love all that. And, and that kind of almost, you know, beyond my childhood dream of playing professional football for Queen's Park Rangers, because that... Yes, yeah, in a minute. Yeah. yeah. You'll get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> and then beyond uh, a real, um, a real, a realistic option, which I did explore for quite a while, um, to the point of doing a project at the local police station, um, I wanted to be a police officer. Um, right. that, that was my first realistic thought. And then when um, uh, it happened to be my, my girlfriend at the time, uh, Donna, who then said, um, uh, no. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'll be too scared you won't come home because you're so full of that, you're going to get yourself into trouble. The uniform yeah. won't save you, Rob. Um, well... I, I, I was quite obedient. Um, I, think it, I think it was one of the better decisions I made to comply. And of course, um, X years later, Don and I married. Um, and uh, earlier this year, we, we, we marked 31 years of marriage. Um, Superb, mate. Well done. Children that we've got. So, uh, well you done. know, fast Absolutely. forward through that story says um, it's a, what many would call a successful one, but, you know, lots of lots of challenges along the way in that journey too um yeah. so, so, so like so to the ministry of justice that was like the second that was like the second year of your that was your yeah it was kind of, of jail, like, the order. <laughs> yeah because what happened was ian i i thought well if i'm not going to be a police officer on you know on the streets as it were in the community in people's faces in a nice way um and representing i i, I you know by then i'd become politicized i was conscious of my of my um of my color i was conscious of the, the some of the turbulence not all of it i was a younger man i didn't i didn't know all of what i know now but mm. but i definitely felt it would be stepping up to the plate i wanted to do that mm. but so it was a bit of a it was a bit of a wrench when i finally concluded that i wasn't going to do that but i thought if i can't get on the streets with it then let me go into the courtrooms with it and let me represent and what really made me do that, I, I remember um, I got back from, um, it, I was in the sixth form. I'd got back home from the sixth form and heard my mum speaking with my godmother. 
um, my auntie Nomi, who sadly passed away, she they were having a conversation and she had gone to the local county court, civil law, to get a document signed and sealed, uh, uh, what's known as sworn. And yeah. she'd gone in and she said she could see a load of people on the other side of the counter. In those days, they weren't screened. They were just an open plan office. Yeah. And she said she could hear them talking, but she couldn't understand what they were saying. She could make out it was English, but they were speaking in such a convoluted way. Um, and they were all white people um, that she felt excluded. She felt I couldn't connect with this. So she <laughs> came back home. She was telling my mum, she said, you mean so them can't get one black people around it? You know, we're doing a house, then blah, 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 blah. So, so in my mind, if not my heart, I thought that was like, it, man. That's where I need to work because I can be an interpreter. I can translate because yeah, I can yeah, understand yeah. what my aunt's saying, my godmother, and I can understand what my white friends are saying. Yeah. And I can flex. 100%. And, yeah. Pivot. Between. If I did that, then I could be the bridge because guess what? We need courts too. We need, yeah. we need documents sworn as well. Oh, wow. So, so that, was, that, was a, that was a moment. That was a light bulb moment. That you, was man. a light bulb moment. Honestly, age 19, that was a light bulb moment. And from there, um, how long did it take you from there, from that moment, until you were actually in the court? Less than a year. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Less you were fired up and that was okay. it. Yeah, less than a year. I mean, don't get me wrong. I applied, I'm talking into triple figures. I applied to places. I applied to IBM. I applied to Glaxo. I applied to oh, well, other jobs. So not just not just a court. Not computing. I, I, I thought computing uh, right. might be something good to do because computing was coming up then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. You've got to remember this is nearly 40 years ago. So I then I then I then got this this application. It happened to be at the local county court, literally less than a thousand yards from home. Um, because I lived in Harlesden on Tubbs Road. And um I said, you know what, Let, I'm going to go for this. And um, I was interviewed uh, rather, uh, I didn't realise at the time, but rather uniquely, I was interviewed by two women. Um, and because at that point, it was very male uh, centric. It was very male driven. But I was interviewed yeah. by two women. Um, I remember I wore a three piece suit. I thought that's what you needed to do. Um, I later on discovered that they were kind of in a, in a nice way they were laughing at me but but they they no, it was, I would have done the same thing back then me. well I I did it because I thought that's what you do but they, yeah, they yeah. were quite relaxed it's, it's oh, really okay yeah they were quite relaxed and and they 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 liked the interview they told me to wait in the waiting room and then they came out and told me I got the job I think they were desperate really but anyway they took me on um and um the rest is history if memory serves I think the interview was on the Tuesday and I started on the Wednesday Wow, the next day. It was that quick. Wow, yeah. wow. 12th brilliant. of October, 1983. Wow, brilliant, man. Fantastic, man. Now look at you, man. Now look at you, eh? 38 Crazy. years in. Crazy. Um, Crazy. And I remember the, um, the uh, when you started in the county court back in those days, you were paid, uh, in order to get you by, you were, you were you, the salary was monthly, but you were paid fortnightly for the first six months. So my first wage slip, which is for two weeks' work, was three hundred and eighty-four pounds. That's a lot of money, man. Back then, isn't it? Three hundred and eighty-four quid. Yeah. Well, for two weeks' work. Yeah. That's good money, man. Back then, surely. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you could. I mean, that's you're coming on fourteen. That, you know, you could do the math. It's not bad. Um, that's good, man. Back then, because yeah. I mean, like my first job, I was like about thirty pound a week. Yeah. See, so, as um, uh, blimey, so I'm at age now. I'm fifty-one. Um, working for the on the YTS, the youth training scheme, it was nowhere near what you're talking about. Yeah. And um, so you were getting sorry, so that like 150 pounds. Yeah, it was about. It came to about after tax and everything. It was it was in 500 nod for the month. I think it was. It's about yeah. Call it six, round figure about 600 quid. That's good money. And then, and that was like uh, 1983. You said yeah. 83. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's that's good money because I I started my my YTS 86 or 87. It was so. Like that, so yeah, that's good money, man. I'd have been like, Oh my god, wow, yeah, oh, your job. <laughs> and, and I mean, the increments weren't great. Um, you know, you, you kind of were in that track for a while, which was fine because, well, in my case, I was living yards from home. Um, I would, well, I would that's good money, man, honestly, not be funny, man. That's really good money. And that was like, I'm telling you, that was good. Maybe you know, you don't realize at the time, I know it sounds rubbish now, but then I don't think that was bad. 
yeah. I just don't think that's bad money. I'd go home for lunch. Um, okay. Yeah, still living with mum. And I would, um, awesome. I'd, so I'd get my stomach full at lunchtime and really have to work a lot harder in the afternoon because I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Full of good food. Really full and up. then, and then um, you know, you, you, de- I then, you then progressed because there was some nice um, routes to, to, to really nice jobs within the court system. Yeah, I bet. Uh, in terms of, you know, sitting with the judge as court clerk or clerk of the court. Um, I, I progressed um, steady, but uh, slow, but steady. Um, I made my way to the local training officer role, which is to actually see to everyone's development across. And in those days, not now, but in those days, we had ooh, close to, uh, you know, at one point, close to 70 people running that court. So, you know, it's quite a, a large yeah. county court. Um, for yeah. those for those days but it's right. enjoyable times lots of as I say lots of love in the home um, yeah 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 lots of laughter some great great parties along the way lovely music <laughs> all of those big influences on my career all of them love of yeah. love of sport so let's, get, let's get on that so, so sport so we are so is that from from back in the day did you go there when yeah you were back in the day yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mick, Mick Leach Ian Gillard Stan Bowles Phil Parks Jerry Francis was it Jerry Francis? And was, it, um, was Ray Wilkins there as well, wasn't he? Yeah, Ray Wilkins, the late Ray Wilkins. Yeah, he was there. He, he At one point, he managed the club as well. That's right, and, yeah. Yeah. I but, remember him, yeah, Ray Wilkins played for them. I remember yeah. Jerry Francis played a little yeah. bit as well. Can big, 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 Dave, big Thomas, and stuff. Dave Thomas, Don Masson. Um, we had... Um, Did he play? Were you any good? Did he kick the ball yourself? I was you very, I was very, very fast when I was young. Mm-hmm. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't that with a ball at your feet. Not great. Not did great. You play? I wasn't bad. I wasn't bad, but I, I kind of I end up playing for Smith Industries. We were in the Hendon and District League, and we we were known for a long time. I think other clubs may have may have uh, achieved this, but for a long time we were the only club to have gone from the fourth division to the Premier Division in that league in successive seasons. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, where did you play? Like midfielder, up front. I played. Yeah. I played left wing. Okay, I did, okay. In my summer's yeah. left winger. Okay, so you, yeah. so, you, 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 so you are left-sided? No. You're not left you're just... uh, That was the oddity. They put me on the left wing so that I would always cut inside. Cutting on your right foot? Uh, yeah, after, the while, after a while, the, the, the cleverer players were able to read me. To suss that out. But I was, I was so quick. I mean, in the lower divisions especially, you just knocked it over the top and I was there. Right. Uh, no, your right I, foot, cut it in and I, then bang or cross it in. At, at certain in certain matches, Ian, I could actually give people a head start. It was that <laughs> I was that quick. Honestly, it was, <laughs> well, I was that quick. Brilliant. Now, as as you as you progress, as you got higher up, you know, people worked out the strategy. They, you know, and it wasn't long before you know I was being subbed in games because it wasn't working. Yeah, they sussed you out. The game, yeah, they sussed One you trick out. pony sort of scenario. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> but I love. I love the game. I've got a lot of the game in my head. I know the game inside out. My better sport in terms of standard, um, because it's the same tactics, was hockey. I okay. was I was very good at hockey and played centre midfield. Yeah. Right. That I never was, played hockey. Never played hockey at all. Hockey um, was a great game because tactically and position wise, it's it's at that point and the game both games have evolved in different directions. But then it was exactly the same, except it was football with a stick and a, a small yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. No, I played football, played a bit of, you know, football. I could have played basketball. I'm six foot ten. Like, you know, my dad's six foot six, mum five foot ten. Um, wow. But, yeah, but I didn't realise, I, was, well, I, knew I was always the tallest. Um, I didn't really play much basketball at school. It was really weird. When he played it about a handful of times, so I didn't know. If I'd known, I'd have been like, you know, or my, my dad said, Ian, look, you're going to be an absolute giant of a man. You, know, you need to play basketball. I, I probably would have done it. And wow. got, you know, I'm starting to put my, no, but I'm nearly seven foot and, you know, a huge guy. So, yeah, I missed my calling. I could have yeah. been hanging out with Snoop and Puff Daddy and them boys, you know what I mean? And whoever, yeah. who knows yeah. over there. Sliding doors. You know, Shaq Sliding and, doors, Ian. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's that? What's that? Sliding doors. You could have yeah. gone another way. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sliding doors. Now I'm just ducking through them instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, brilliant. So, music. So, tell me about, so you know, who, who do you like to listen to? Oh, uh, I you name it, name it. I I love what's your iTunes right now. So right now, what's on your what have you listened to right right now? If you had to go put the headphones on, what would be on it? Right now, I can do it. I'll go there. Is right now is David Bowie. Move on 
from the Lodger album uh, because the reason that's there is I recently listened to a podcast with Tracy Emin and she was talking about that she had got to know Artist. David Bowie. Yeah. So I listened to, to that. I love 80s pop. Uh, I'm a huge uh, reggae fan spe and especially British reggae. I, I, okay. I, of course. As well done. Yeah. As well done. Cool yeah, you be early you be 40. Not oh, early. yeah, me too. Um, signing off. Yeah. My first yeah, album. Signing off. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Signing off. That's <laughs> the one. Um, um, but you know, Steel Pulse, Hands Work Revolution, um, all of that black, you know, Black West, Uhuru. Black Uhuru, um, Third World, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Chalice, um, all of that stuff is running through me. Yeah, 100 percent me kinda, too. I can listen to that sweet in terms of you know, stuff that might might be uh, more widely known. Stevie, of course, Stevie Wonder, Marvin yeah. Gaye, yeah, yeah. Aretha, Aretha Franklin. Of course, yeah, definitely, man. Nina Simone, yeah. I'm a huge fan of Nina Simone. Oh, really? I've never listened to much of her, apart from the oh. obvious ones. The oh. obvious ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to say, Nina Simone, um, I, I'm, I'm almost ashamed to admit this, but um, it, was, it was a conversation with my brother, I think, younger by two years, and he gave me a box set of Nina Simone that I... Um, wasn't aware of and I, I obviously knew some of the um the more popular tunes yeah like me yes yeah, I'm the same yeah. yeah but I thought I listened to the box set and I fell in love um, wow and then and how then long I, was that like, how long ago was that, that? Uh, it's relatively I mean we're talking it's less than it's maybe about 16 17 years ago okay I like that that's good because you're so glad you found her right oh my gosh I yeah, could yeah. not I could not believe that I didn't know of her <laughs> more in terms of I love like that when that happens yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. It's, it's a, sim a similar thing happened to me with Louis Armstrong. Um, but, you know, all of that, all of the jazz classics, I mean, but, and then a friend of mine um, introduced me to um, John Coltrane. Right, okay. Um, a bit of my, so it, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose, quite an eclectic mix. I mean, I love 80s pop is is a turn to. I've, I, I often set the radio to absolute 80s and just listen to it. Wow. It, you know, your Spandau Ballet. Yeah, yeah, I love that era. I Elvis think... Costello, uh, yeah. Blondie. Um, Tears for Fears. Tears for Fears, all of that stuff. You know what I mean? Love yeah, it. definitely. I love, love it, it. Blondie, man. I love it, Blondie. Yeah, definitely. Love it, love it. Um, I'm, I'm, Van Morrison. Van Morrison. Nah, I'm not really into Van Morrison. Nah, I'm not really into him. Nah. Oh, really? Do you play instruments? Do you play any instruments? Uh, not a single one. Not a single one away. Okay, yeah. Not a single one. But I started, um, playing, the, started playing the drums when I was um, 11 at high school. I still yeah. play the percussion now. In yeah. fact, I had a catch at my wife's party of the weekend. I think I said to you last week, it's Caroline 50th. Yeah, oh, so you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so, but in that era, the 80s, like Tears for Fears and, um, and Simple Mind, they had a really good drumming sort of tracks and Phil Collins and that. Yeah. Drumming. So yeah. I loved it. Like, like yeah. was a bit do you remember, do you remember, um, Level 42? Oh. Beggar and Co., Light of the World. Light the World, yeah, Light of the World, yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Yeah. They yeah, had yeah, some. Yeah. They had some tremendous. I mean, obviously, you, you talk about Earth, Wind, and Fire, and you'd gone to another level. Yeah. But but certainly, British bands, High Tension. Yeah, the cousins yeah. were in them. Baby Joseph and that. Baby Joseph and um, yeah, yeah and my yeah. cousins from well, not far from you. They, they actually grew up in Kilburn and Crooklewood. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so we, uh, and you had yeah. David Brighton Links. You had Links. Lee John in Imagination. <laughs> Right, yeah, great time. I was, I, a dear friend of mine, a mutual friend, uh, Leroy Logan, who was subject to the of the um, uh, Red, White, and Blue and Small Axe series with Steve McQueen. Do you remember that was on BBC One? No, no, I don't you know. I'll drop that down, Ian, and check that out. But it's still what? available on iPlayer. Um, Leroy Logan wrote a book called Closing Ranks. He's uh, a former uh, police officer, um, and um, uh, Jamaican, um, uh, certainly Jamaican heritage, um, written a book called Closing Ranks, and um, he had his book picked up by Steve McQueen, the director, um, he of um, 12 Years a Slave, and yes. Steve McQueen made a series of uh, short films that the BBC serialised and uh, broadcast under the title Small Acts. So you've got um uh, mangrove you've got um uh, uh, which is the story about the the, the riots that took place right. yeah, yeah on the estate yeah in in near portobello road you've got um S leroy's story that was told um and um john boyega he of star wars 
Of course. He, play, he played St- uh, Leroy Logan. Do you know what? I saw it advertised. It was on this year, wasn't it? Yeah, I've been nominated for a few awards. It's That's right, yeah. I've just never watched it. Yeah, I've seen it advertised, yeah. But yeah, if uh, if there's any listeners um, who haven't uh, heard that or seen it, do check out um, the small act series. They're all great. Uh, Leroy's story is told through red, white and blue. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And um, I think it's an hour, hour and a half um, sort of movie length. And um, uh, it was, um, I mean, Leroy talked, me personally so much around building of networks um you know our families are literally entwined oh uh, really oh, yeah okay. so you kind of know him really well obviously. really well yeah yeah okay, good. Holiday is, that, is that for your work or something like that? So through well, work or... it, it, it ended up being through work but it's through our faith really we, right. we both we both met at the same church we were both um as families we were both um in our adult life baptized uh, a week apart and right, we went, okay. went on a spiritual journey together. Wow, 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 excellent. And wow. got got very close uh, around that. So, um, and I was at a book launch. His his hardback was launched earlier uh, in uh, the year, or was it last year, actually, his book. But his um, his paperback was launched more recently. And um, okay. Lee, Lee John and Lee John and... and, and Leroy Logan grew up. Uh, well, imagination, uh, Lee John. Yeah, the imagination, yeah. Lee John. And he wow. performed. He performed on the evening. Oh, uh, did he? Yeah. And it was absolutely superb. He's got the greatest voice. Um, here's a copy. Let me just show you. Here's a copy of Leroy's book. Him and him and Lee John are mates. Yeah, they're mates. Wow, wow, wow. How cool yeah. is that? Okay, yeah, excellent. There's Leroy's superb. book, closing ranks. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I know you. I know the guy. I know you're talking. I know exactly what you're talking about. Superb. The story of a, a, certainly a big chunk of his career, 30 year career yeah, as yeah, a yeah. police officer. He's retired now. Yeah. Um, no, I, I recognize him. I recognize yeah. him. Yeah. So, mate, mate, listen, this is unbelievable. This has flown by as well. Look, wow. Um, it just, I don't know, I can't remember how long we've been on. It's just been, it's just absolutely flown past. Um, but this is great. Really, really good, juicy stuff. And um, so, I, it's got to be in over an hour, right? It must be. Be. It's, absolutely fun it's, now, it's now 6 30. Did we start before 5 30? I think we did. I think we did, man. I think we did. Yeah, you're right. gonna have to do some editing, Ian. Do you know what I'm saying, man? Definitely yeah. chop it up, man. Um, so I'm chopping up. It tends to happen <laughs> with me. I, I'm, I'm a bit verbose at times. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so look, tell me, I know you've got um got a podcast, right? But also, yeah. okay, let's just gonna wrap it up a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> um, normally, normally do like a, a quick fire round, excuse me. Yeah, let's do that. Get this bit cut out, this it out. So, um, so favorite football team, you know what it is. Uh, what's your favorite band? Oh, my favorite band. Oh, wow. I'm gonna say Steel Pulse. Steel Pulse. Wow. Okay. Wicked. Okay. Superb. I've known them for ages, man. You can get me listen to them in a bit of as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. Favorite car? Oh, I, I'm in love with the Evoke. The, the, the Evoke, range, yeah. Range okay, Evoke. Yeah, I do like I do like the idea of one of those. Yeah, I don't yeah. have one, but yeah. I, do like, the, well, I yeah. do like the idea of one of those. One of those. Okay, um, cool. Obviously, there's top range cars that you could dream about, but that one is maybe I could maybe I could get to one of those. I'm going to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you can, man. Man, if you're with this Crystal Alliance gig going on, I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to. You're gonna be. You're gonna exceed that. You're gonna exceed that. Within a, no, before you know it. Um, okay. Favorite tipple on the weekend. I do like night. a Guinness. I do like a Guinness. Yeah. Uh, at Christmas time, I'll have uh, a, a nice quality brandy with a bit of ice. Um, but but no um, rum. You don't, like, you don't like Jamaican rum. I don't mind it. It's not Appleton. something I run after. No, I don't run after it. I'm not a right. big rum drinker. But I do like a bit of brandy at, 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 on special occasions. Good occasions. Uh, okay. But, cool. But throughout the year. Um, I do like a Guinness. Like a Guinness, uh, okay, fair okay. enough. I, I don't want a Guinness. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lager, I like a nice lager, and my, my rum, my white rum. I have to have that in the house at all times. I have to have that, man. You know I mean, some days, look, a couple bits of that, and uh, yeah, and everything. I, right. I, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that. Okay, cool. Um, so, QPR, Range yeah. Rover, yeah. Uh, Guinness, and also... Holiday, I'm assuming Jamaica. 
Uh, absolutely, Jamaica has to be on that list. Um, uh, but I, 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 more than more than that, I think because there, there's so many wonderful, almost secret places in Jamaica that one can get to, and where my folks are from in Saint Elizabeth and specifically Junction, there are some delicious places. And yeah, there is. I, I would never tire of going there. But yeah. I like going to places that I haven't been before. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. So if I can get, even if it's you know, I've been to several parts of Spain. I've been to several parts of Italy. But always, countries. I've done, yeah. I've done Croatia for the first time about five weeks ago. Only four wow. nights. Little, yeah. little trips. Yeah. And, um, it was just great. So I mean, well, pre-COVID, along with some friends, the wife and I with some other dear friends of ours, we were going away and we'd managed it about 11 years on the trot. We would go away for our anniversary <laughs> along with some other couples. And, um, oh, my goodness. We went to well, we went Barcelona, Prague, you go. Rome, yeah, yeah, yeah. Florence, Budapest, yeah. Venice. Right, we, we, I'm not doing that. And we went yeah. boom, 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 boom. And then we we actually had booked to go to um oh Seville. Okay. And right. then the COVID gripped because it's in the June or July of each year that we would go away. And when COVID gripped in March of last year, and then we, we kept, we held on to it for as long as possible, and then it wasn't going to happen. So yeah. we, we just pressed the button and got our money back. And when, when, and as soon as we are out, out of, um, out, out, but as soon as we uh, get out of the, the lockdown, we'll be back on that track. Back on it again, yeah, definitely. Got done. I think travelling is the best education. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it cool, is. Man, listen, I've got to wrap things up. I've got another, I'm five minutes late for another, um, not a podcast, but I've got a Zoom okay. with a candidate. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, but listen, but no, look, um, we've got a growing audience and you've yeah. got some people as well that are listening and viewers and listeners. So is there one thing you want to say? I mean, is it about AA? Is it about the podcast? This is... The floor's yours real quick. Well, what I will mention, because everyone can pick up our, our Crystal Alliance at the website, www.crystalalliance.co.uk. The one thing I will mention is one of my latest and most exciting ventures with my dear friend, Paul. We've started uh, a radio show, which we broadcast live ordinarily. It's currently for the next month in podcast format. Um, so recorded and put out thereafter. But it's called Unfinished Business. Um, all of our... 46 episodes to date uh, it's a weekly show so we've gone actually gone a calendar year already um are available on spotify mm -hmm. just search for unfinished business with paul and rob you'll get it there all 46 episodes um and you can catch us on our website it's www.ubharrowradio.com so that's www.ub for unfinished business but just yep ubharrowradio.com and on there you'll get all the archive shows and we've had Doreen Lawrence on we've had some some people some local bands on we've had um, some people working in the EDNI space if the first part of this interview um, and podcast tickles you there's lots of that on there we've just had a show with um, Van Morrison tracks next week oh and we review Ridley Road we've reviewed Squid Game we've reviewed oh, really Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we review a program each week as well and next week we're reviewing dave Chappelle. oh um, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah the, the the latest offering of his stand-up and it's controversial apparently he's getting a bit of yeah yeah he is and we're going to do six tracks from a single artist because normally we do a theme or a genre but we're going to do six tracks from a single artist and that single artist next week monday the podcast will be out later in the week will be diana ross okay Okay, sounds superb, superb. Listen, man, it's been, a, it's been great. I want to do it again already. I'm thinking in my head. I like the idea of doing something live with some other people. And, uh, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, that'd I like the idea of that. Definitely up so, to uh, that. Brilliant, yeah. mate. Superb. Yeah, thank you so much. So intellectual, a servant, all of us living over here, all UK residents, in London, the years, uh, for, for the work that you've done. And, uh, you know, you. totally deserve it in terms of the accolade of, of OBE. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you've been a brilliant guest. Thank you very much. Rob Neal. You, know you know what OBE stands for, Ian, don't you? Honorary of the British Empire, is that right? No, no. no. Uh, order, order. order some, yeah, you might have got that in a quiz, just about. But order. some people some people say it stands for other buggers' efforts. Um, <laughs> and certainly in my case, that would be true, because nah, mate, it has been modest, a load mate, of people around me, some lovely people. But my, I like what my daughter says, 
because the OB I've got given for my services to race equality in the civil service and across the community, which is I'm equally proud of, of both of those. But she says OBE stands for obviously black every day. <laughs> okay, fair like enough. That. Without a doubt, hundred percent, man. Until like the day that. you die. Like <laughs> Until the day you die. I, mean, I think that is a, a nice way to end it. Obviously, Definitely, man. every day. So, and ain't that the truth? That, they can put the letters after my name anytime. Hundred percent. Ain't that the truth? Hey, man, Rob, I'm gonna have to run, man. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. Great. Take Great. it easy, man. I hope it Speak survives soon. the edit. I hope it survives I'm... the edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do. I'll ring it tomorrow. We'll catch up tomorrow. Good I'll give you a bell. No, thank you so much. And thanks for the invitation. It's been great being here. Digital Hub. I love it. Hope you enjoyed it, buddy. Hope you enjoyed it. Absolutely.